and here we will discuss in detail about the Bayes rule for distribution of discrete random variable. How we had already seen that uh, Bayes rule for uh, probability uh, that happens to be what uh, it is actually one kind of uh, uh, restatement of conditional probability. Similar reason we will see it here in the process of uh, defining Bayes rule for uh, discrete random variable, distribution of discrete random variable and various application of that we will see it here. So I can turn all these uh, pre previous lecture and this lecture, previous lecture was all about computation of joint probability mass function. This lecture is all about Bayes rule for distribution of discrete random variable. Okay, so both you can say that are application of conditional probability mass function. So same thing you can say it like this way. So coming to outline of today's lecture, uh, first we will state about Bayes rule for distribution of discrete random variable and uh, few more examples related to that Bayes rule we will discuss in detail about. And if time permits, then we will go to discuss about conditional expectation. So conditional expectation, as I mentioned that it is very much essential for uh, the linear model where your response happens to be continuous in nature. Uh, and uh, uh, when your response is discrete in nature, just you rely on uh, estimation of conditional probability. Okay, but if your estimation happens to be this continuous in nature, then you have to go to talk about estimation of conditional expectation. And conditional expectation is defined um, with the help of conditional probability mass function. Okay, and if uh, random variable happens to be continuous, then conditional density function would come there. Okay. And then after we will discuss about independency. Okay, uh, how if a situation is that uh, if two random variables happen to be independent, then what kind of simplicity we will observe in this framework? So that thing we will also discuss here. Simply we can say that independency simply it is one kind of that uh, it approach that simplifies the calculation of all those uh, concept probability distribution what we we have already discussed till now. Okay, and uh, dependency is more reliable thing towards a real world problem. So dependency also in the process of understanding independency, we have to understand dependency as well. So if sup suppose there is a, uh, what kind of independency uh, is not working fine, we have to little bit uh, complicate that problem. We can talk about conditional independency. Okay, so those things uh, during probability elementary in model one, we had already discussed similar concept would come uh, here from the discrete random variable perspective as well and for also later it will come for continuous random variable as well. <coughs> so coming to first part of this uh, lecture that page rule for distribution of discrete random variable, how we define it. So it is already we had already seen the definition of uh, conditional probability mass function. So just we need to restate that in order to get page rule for distribution of discrete random variable. So how we define it like this way. So suppose uh, we had already seen that definition of conditional probability mass function. If you just uh, do little bit manipulation of that, then that will lead to the computation of posterior probability distribution. So here in case of Bayes rule, uh, ultimate task is that uh, prior probability distribution of a random variable would be given to you. Now, by the application of Bayes rule, you have to compute posterior probability distribution. So, what is happening that prior means your initial belief or prior belief. Okay. So, your prior, if your prior belief is, in, is really in the right direction, then it simply says that uh, actually what will happen that uh, posterior would be better one. Okay. But if suppose your prior belief is wrong, totally wrong or a little bit wrong, then definitely you will see that posterior would not behave correctly. So that situation is coming here. So prior belief is just based on various assumptions, various approaches or experience simply overall we can say that experience. So we know that in last lecture we had already seen that joint probability mass function can be computed how by observation of uh, one random variable first later we have to uh, observe another random variable given the first random variable. So like here situation is coming that we are having in an experiment we are having two random variable x and y and both are uh, observing possible value uh, jointly or what we call it simultaneously. Okay. So suppose here if there are two random variable definitely various situation would come here. So we are uh, 
trying to talk about joint occurrence of x and y so what is happening that suppose uh, it is not always possible to observe joint occurrence of x y together it, it is very much complicated kind of task unless the distribution, joint distribution is given to you okay or whether it is a simple problem but if in the last uh, sense it is difficult so what we do uh, we go through uh, what uh, partial observation suppose we observe y first okay after that we are observing x so if you are observing a y first what does it mean that means we know the distribution of y that means we know the protein mass function of y because we have already observed y so that's where protein mass function of y is coming afterward we are observing x given y so that's where we are having conditional protein mass function of x given y but suppose another person is coming no 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 um, for me actually x is, observation of x is very fine so that person will observe x first then what is meaning of that that means you know the protein mass function of that x so okay. after that if you once you have already observed uh, x that after that you are observing y so that's why you will have conditional protein mass function of y given x so this one is purely computational or simply you can say that purely practical you can do that practically it is feasible so what we do here just we play with these two we see that these two product of distribution is giving joint protein the mass function of x and y so we just uh, directly it is coming from what we call it it is just one we have statement of conditional protein mass function so that's where uh, from here what we do suppose someone is saying that no uh, i'm observing x first so for that person what will happen that uh, if uh, that person is observing x first so then that person know the protein mass function of x that we are calling it prior protein mass function of x and now uh, once uh, what we uh, what is happening that uh, you want to see that uh, uh, what are the due to that uh, uh, further what you observe that uh, for each x you are observing y so for each x you are observing y so what is happening that uh, you try to uh, see the effect of y on x so that means you are trying to compute probability of x given y that means this probability of x given y what we call it it is actually that is a posterior probability you, you are already having protein distribution of x and after that you are trying to compute the protein distribution of x given y so generally we call it this one is the posterior um, probability mass function of x given y once one observation y you are observing given okay so after that so how we just do the state this one after that what we observe that uh, the conditional probability of x given y uh, also you can directly define it from the definition of uh, conditional protein mass function how we define it it is simply say that uh, just uh, replace everything all these protein mass function into corresponding probability so what does it say it simply say that it is talking about <laughs> probability that uh, it is talking about uh, a specific uh, probability it is talking about conditional probability that random variable x is observing x for given that random variable y is observing y okay and you know from the definition of conditional probability what does it say it is talking about joint occurrence of x is observing x a small x and random variable y is observing small y okay that means joint probability of x equal to x and y equal to y divided by probability that y is observing small y so you know that and what what name we had given this one this one we are calling it joint probability mass function of x and y we are calling it joint probability mass function of x and y okay so that's why uh, from this real straight, uh, statement we come to see that uh, actually conditional probability mass function of x given y it is ratio of joint probability mass function of x and y divided by probability mass function of x and y
okay and further what you do here here this one is talking about joint property mass function x and y so apply this definition uh, or uh, either one okay so here suppose you are observing x first because uh, you are trying to update the property of x so that means you definitely you will have prior probability distribution of x so that prior probability distribution is x so first you are observing x after that you are observing y so you are having conditioning over y conditional probability this would be a small y y given x this is conditional y given x okay divide by probability mass function of two y okay at y so that's why it is same what we discuss about okay now further if you try to open about talk about this one what does it talk about it is talking about uh, you are trying to compute the probability of the event that random variable y is observing value uh, one particular value y so you have to compute this probability so how you can compute this probability you can compute this probability through this total probability law all uh, total probability rule or what we call it uh, chain rule so you have to apply chain rule in order to compute the probability of y so these so here you are it would be given to you so what are things that you need to compute you need to compute this and you need to compute this these two things are very much essential it would be given to you and it would be your just it is your common sense that you have to come up with protein mass prior probability distribution okay vice versa also uh, if uh, prior distribution of y is given to you uh, you using the beige rule you have to compute the posterior distribution of y given x you have to compute posterior distribution of y given x likewise this one here i discuss about uh, for given prior distribution of x you are going to compute posterior distribution of x given y okay so likewise also you can do the same uh, approach here here you can compute like all these so coming further so here as i discussed that what are important thing in order to compute the uh, posterior probability two important thing is that we have to focus on how to compute the probability of for y is observing value of small y so we have to compute this probability how we have to compute this probability okay so it is very much essential so let me here further elaborate regarding this uh, base rule for uh, probability mass function so here we are calling it p of x it is prior distribution of x then another term is coming probability of y given x so actually here uh, what is happening that here y is fixed y is here you can observe that y equal to uh, y is observing a specific value y so for that a specific y it is no more a probability distribution probability mass function what is that it is just a probability and it is just a probability and what kind of probability it is it is a probability which depends upon x it is a function of x so we can simply say that y is your given data it is given to you given event so it, you can say that it is what it is data generating process and we generally don't call it for the mass function what we call it we are saying that it is the likelihood of y condition on x so we call generally it is likelihood function it is not a probability mass function it is a likelihood function because here y is fixed if y you are taking fixed you are not taking all possible y then what will happen it will not give distribution it will just talk about few probability so it is just about probability okay and so that's a specific name and here we observe that y happens to be fixed so here x is varying so that's where it is having a name that we are calling it likelihood of observing y condition on x likelihood function now that third component probability of y of how we can compute so as i mentioned that we we can compute it how um, by marginalization of uh, joint protein mass function so this one is the joint protein mass function here you try to exhaust x that means sum up this is a discrete joint protein mass function so sum with respect to all x so x will be exhausted so what would be the remaining thing here only y would be remaining thing. okay so further but you don't know the x 
explicit form of this joint protein mass function. So what you will do, you will break this one into this product factor. Uh, you can factor into in this way, and you know about this uh, probability mass function prior one, and also you know this likelihood function, and sum of this for all x. So again here x will be adjusted. Finally, you will have probability of observing y. You will have probability of observing y. So that is the approach. So this we, we try to calculate it. Uh, various things are coming here. Chain rule is coming here. Before that, marginalization is coming here. Marginalization that we try to uh, exhaust one variable. So that is the. So like if you are give, given, you are having joint random variable x and y. So how you can find the distribution of x if, if it is given so distribution of x easily you can get it by exhausting y from this joint distribution how you adjust sum the joint distribution for all y then y would be adjusted okay so that is the approach so sum with respect to y that it would be just it will be just function of x y will be exhausted okay likewise if you are willing to compute probability distribution for y then how you can compute you can compute by uh, adjusting x from the joint distribution so all these we are calling it marginal distribution we are we are one kind of thing we are performing marginalization okay so these are what marginal distribution or simply distribution you can call distribution of individual random variable so marginal distribution you can call it or simply it, these are distribution of x and y so all these are a story of Bayes rule what we discuss now i will talk about few exa example so Bayes rule for uh, we try Bayes rule uh, we will apply Bayes rule in order to compute posterior probability mass function of length of binary string Okay, what is meaning of binary string? Anyone know? In machine situation is what happened. So it is they are taking entry like 0, 1. Binary string that means uh, in that string we are having uh, any representation of any number in the form of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that one is the binary string. So 0, 1 generally here uh, there, there are various uh, number system one is binary system another is decimal system hexadecimal so various things so binary in binary representation uh, what digit we are having only two possible digit one is zero another one is one if you are going for decimal representation what are the uh, digit there in decimal representation anyone would like to highlight anyone just uh, highlight that uh, in the decimal representation of uh, any digit, uh, decimal representation of any number, what are the digits? Anyone? Yeah, 0, 1, 2, 3, 9. Okay, uh, up to 9. So, 0 to 9 in decimal. And in binary, so everyone might be aware of number system, all those. So, you can recall those things. So, these are talking about decimal representation. So, if you are going to get a decimal representation of any number, so those number can be expressed with the help of these only 10 digit okay with the help of but if you are going for binary representation you need just two zero and one with the help of that you can so number would be equivalent but representation in the decimal and uh, binary would be different so that is the approach it is all about representation okay so suppose we are having a question like this way suppose x is talking about the number of ones that appears in the binary string of length n okay there is a binary string of length n how you can compute length you can compute length by counting total number digit in that string okay so so that's where x is counting uh, so here in the binary string x is counting the number of ones that appear in the binary string of length l okay so what would you prove what kind of uh, uh, random variable this x would be anyone what kind of random variable it would be anyone just tell me the uh, uh, nature of random variable. It is definitely a discrete random variable. Among the discrete random variable, I had already discussed about various discrete random variable. Tell me what kind of random variable X would be? Anyone? Don't know. Here, if you talk about uh, 
this one digit it is talking about here this one place okay it is zero this place it is one so in each trial of the string what you observe either zero or one will come if you talk about try to predict in the uh, about next what next digit will come in that string that would be either zero or one so each trial contains only two out either zero or one so that means each trial is what it is of bernoulli nature okay now here uh, you are defining x is talking about number of ones that appear in the binary string of length l so x is actually binomial distribution x is a binomial random variable it is talking about uh, what success is what one success is related with one so it is counting number of ones so in binary string there would be definitely k number of ones out of n number of if uh, n number of uh, total trials or n a string with length n if suppose k k would be the success you can call it so k will take value from 0 to n so that is the same so simply x is a binomial distribution binomial random variable what we call it okay now each bit in the string is equal to so you can see that each bit in the string is either it is 0 or 1 and either 0 with probability 1 by 2 and 1 with probability 1 by 2 so probability of so 1 by 2 is what we call it probability of success for each trial p probability of success is also given here for Bernoulli number uh, Bernoulli trial is for each Bernoulli trial probability of success is given here now if you talk about x so x is a random variable anyone would like to say that what are the parameter of x anyone x is a binomial random variable so there are two parameters a binomial random variable is having one is number of total trial and another one is probability of success so what are the parameter here it is given here uh, it is talking about ten, a string of length l that means n equal to l l is given to you and probability of success given to you that one is one by two so x is a binomial distribution with these two parameters so l is known to you one by two that probability of success is known to you so you know the distribution of x it is having a binomial, binomial distribution okay and uh, independence uh, so each binomial trial is independent to other okay so that situation is already given here further suppose given l equal to this uh, small l given one a specific value of l we know x has the binomial distribution when k is less than equal to m so remember that we are having here two random variable one is coming x which is having a binomial distribution and we are talking about here the length of string is also random in nature that uh, we can give a name here this l is also random in nature remember that this l is not fixed here right now uh, okay it is random in nature so we are having joint random variable x and l suppose l equal to small l is given uh, to us so that means it is uh, we have all we we you know the, about this partial information or uh, we know about know about this okay given to us and after that given this we try to observe x and x will take value from k and that k will be what it will vary from zero to small l for the given l. okay so that's why we are talking about conditional distribution of x given l okay and outside this one if you are taking value of l greater than this a small l then for that probability is zero we are not bothering about outside for that okay so situation is coming that here for uh, x equal to k what will what would be this uh, value it is directly coming from binomial distribution and if you simplify what you observe that it is just function of what l because k is given to you x equal to k it is given to you so it is just a function of l this we are calling it likelihood function likelihood function likelihood of observing k for given l okay it is just a probability it is not a probability distribution because k is fixed here k is not varying it is function of l so you can call it it is what f of this l okay now suppose that the length of a string is also random and uh, we it is uniformly distributed uh, between 1 to 10 that means the uh, what we call it the prior distribution of l is given to us 
the prior distribution of l is what it is 1 by 10 when l is taking value from 1 to 10 okay otherwise it is 0 it is uniformly distributed between 1 to 10 means it is uh, having distribution 1 by 10 when l is taking value 1 to 10 okay otherwise it is 0 so this is the prior distribution of x then we have to, l okay then we have to find posterior distribution of l given x and here x is what it is a binomial random variable so it is taking value discreetly so we have to find posterior distribution of l given k that means l given x this we have to find this posterior distribution how we can find it so question is coming that so we learn that the binary string contains four ones what does it it say that k equal to four one a specific value of k x that one is equal to four it is given to us okay k equal to four x is counting number of ones okay then how can we use this information to update the probability of the length of the string so th this for this given x we have to find this probab conditional probability of uh, length given x and given x uh, x is what it is 4 k equal to 4 so we have to find this one so how we can find this one we can find this one with the help of base rule so we are finding it like this way so for given l we have the binary string uh, um, contains length uh, four ones what does it it is talking about that means we are having this value for k equal to one we are having the value of likelihood function k equal to four here we can say that it is likelihood function k equal to four uh, uh, we know the likelihood function okay so this is just a function of l you can observe the k is here fixed so it is function of l so it is just what for given l it is just a probability it is not a probability mass function it is just a probability it is that's why we can call it likelihood function likelihood function now and uh, the prior distribution of the length l that happens to be random variable it is also given so that one is what it is uniformly distributed so it is given okay so we are having prior distribution of l we are having like good function what is remaining thing in order to apply wedge theorem so uh, here we are trying to calculate the posterior probability of l given x and given k equal to 4 or x equal to 4 also you can call it so we are willing to calculate this probability so we are applying Bayes rules what we do so we will take prior probability of l that one is uniformly distributed from 1 to 10 prior probability of l times likelihood function of uh, x given l and x 4k equal to 4 divided by probability of observing x equal to 4 or you can simply write in term of probability mass function that x equal to 4 it is we are evaluating at 4 so what we do this one is given to us this one also we come come to find we, we are able to compute now remaining thing is that we need to calculate of probability that x is observing taking value 4 so how we can compute so we can compute it what by marginalizing l in this uh, joint probability uh, l is taking value from 1 to n so we have to sum up for n to 1, uh, 1 to n and what we do we don't have joint probability mass function so what we do we apply chain rule or multiplication rule we by, uh, factor it into as a product of probability of l into conditional probability of x given l okay or likelihood function conditional probability i'm just saying that it is conditional probability it is not a conditional probability mass function it is just a conditional probability okay because k equal to 4 is given to us fix okay so we here l is variable we are summing for all l after summation what we representation we are getting we are getting this representation so it is here simply value l is taking a small l is taking from 1 to 10 so it is just a fixed number we, you can compute it it is there is no any issue so we are having 
everything we are we know the prior property we know the likelihood function we know the probability of observing four so every all these three component we have already computed so easily we can find the probability posterior probability of l for given x equal to four so what would be this one it would be this it would be defined like this one we know uh, so you can simplify this one it is this summation is very simple you can simply find it it is just a fixed number so you can easily get this is the desired posterior distribution of length okay for given x equal to 4 this is the desired distribution okay so this we come up with this you can easily see that it is definitely different from this prior distribution it is, it is giving more reliable distribution of l for given 4 so now we will take another question base rule we will apply it here to find the posterior probability mass function of a a coin toss of uh, when we are having three different type of coin so it is little bit uh, very interesting kind of problem and complex it would be so we are having three different types of coin that means simply we say that we are having a co three coins in which probability of success might be different that means we are having three Bernoulli trials where probability of success would be different so that is that that is the situation That situation is coming here. So, how to find protein posterior protein mass function? So, suppose question is like this way: there are three types of coins which have different probabilities of landing heads when tossed. Okay, simply different different hypothesis is coming. So, what are those types? So, type A coins are fair. That means simply you can say that probability of success for type A coin is 0.5 because it is a fair coin. Uh, type B coins are bent and bent and biased towards head. That means that probability of success in type B coin is greater than 0.5 and that value is also given it is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is greater than 0.5. That means it is bent towards head. Type C coins are bent towards tail. Okay, now it is uh, bent towards again head, something more than that. So here probability of success for type C coin is, uh, is what 0.9. Okay. So these three different type of coins are coming here. Okay. So suppose I have a drawer containing five coins. In the drawer containing five coins, two of type A, two of type B, one of type C. So I reach into the drawer and pick a coin at random okay so question is coming that without solving you the coin i flip it once and get heads what is the probability that it is type a what is the probability that it is type b what is the probability that it is type c after performing that toss of that coin I am asking what are the probability. So simply here I am just asking posterior probability. I am asking here posterior probability. What are the probability? So you can uh, name the event that uh, probability of uh, um, getting a head in, in this toss. Okay. In this peak of the toss. Okay. So here we are introducing the concept here. A, B, C we are calling the event that coin was type a type b and type c and d is the event of interest that we are calling it that event the toss is head that event of the toss is head okay so uh, we have to come we can come up with probability of d we can compute that with the help of chain rule also probability of a is given that one is 0 0.5 probability of b is given that one is 0 0.6 and probability of c is given so everything all these are given so here the problem is what the problem is that we have to find the posterior probability so just right now we are trying to solve it from probability uh, element probability what we call it later it will be converted into uh, distribution as well so um, both approach i had discussed here so we have to compute the probability posterior probability of a b and c posterior probability given d d that event which is already occurred so we need to compute the probability of d as well so simply if you are asking how to compute probability of a given d that posterior probability of a so simply you have to apply base rule it base rule will say that 
you have to come up with pro prior property of A and multiply the likelihood of the event D given A divided by probability of D. So three probability you need to calculate it here. And sorry, it is D. Probability of D. One, it is given from the question. Second, you need to compute from the question itself. And third, also you need to compute these three and your job is done. Likewise, also you need to apply the same process for probability of uh, partial probability of B and partial probability of C given D. Okay, so we are solving this question like this way. So here the experiment is that uh, here we pick a coin from the drawer at random. This is the okay, event and we flip it. The end result, uh, we record the result. So what would be data? Data would be the result of our experiment that we perform. That's whether head is coming, tail is coming, from which coin it is coming. So that is the data. Data we have already recorded. So in this case, the event is getting head. So we think of D as a data that provides evidence for or against each hypothesis. So what are the hypotheses? We are hypothesis, three hypotheses, either whether it is a type a coin type b coin or type c coin so three hypotheses so whether this data is going to uh, provide an event evidence in support of the hypothesis or against the hypothesis that we'll see so prior first we need to calculate prior distribution of a b and c so the probability of each hypothesis prior to tossing coin or collecting coin it is given to us uh, so, so since the drawer, uh, sorry, uh, it is given to us in such a way that uh, we have to look into drawer and all are equally likely situations. So that way, uh, all coins are equally likely situations. So, so what is happening that uh, in the outcome, outcome manner we will can compute. So the drawer is having two coins uh, of type A, two coins of type B and one coins of type C. So how out, so total five coins are there. So out of five coins, how many coins are of type A? Two. So probability of observing A, it would be two by five. That means 0.4. Two by five out of five coin, two coins are type A coin. So probability of observing A or prior probability of A would be two by five. Likewise, out of five coin, two coins are of type B. So pro probability of observing B, that means prior probability of b it is 2 by 5 that means 0.4 out of 5 coin one coin is c uh, c type coin so that means probability of observing c that means probability of prior probability of c is 1 by 5 1 by 5 means 0.2 so you are having prior distribution of a b and c that means prior probability of a b and c okay so now further one job is done we come up with prior distribution next job is to compute likelihood of observing d given hypothesis so how we can compute the likelihood function the probability of d given h or given hypothesis that means the probability of the data assuming that the hypothesis is true okay so that we need to uh, compute again again three type of uh, uh, likelihood function would come or likelihood probability would come or probability would come so what are those for example here we will compute that probability of d given a it is talking about probability of getting head if the coin is type a so what is that probability it is already given that type a coin is fair coin so probability of d given a it would be just 0.5 and probability of d given a uh, given b it uh, b is a probability that happens to be bias coin that means and having probability of success 0 0.6 so that's why probability of d given b it would be 0 0.6 likewise probability of d given c it would be 0 0.9 so you know the likelihood function like our probability for each probability of data for a given hypothesis simply you are calling it probability of data given uh, given hypothesis you know this one so second second job is done now we will try to compute probability of D, uh, that means probability of data. So how we can compute uh, probability of data? So uh, we are computing in order to compute proportional probability that we need to compute these things. Okay. So from the base rule, we come up with uh, 
the explicit form of uh, posterior protein like this way protein of a given d protein of b given d and protein of given c given d so this one is directly coming from base root so here everywhere we can see that uh, observe protein of observing data so we have to compute protein of d how we can compute protein of d we can compute it by chain rule or total law of protein total law of probability so uh, total law of probability how we can compute that so here we can easily see that uh, we had a sample of space that has been divided into uh, three part a b c so a b c is introducing partition of the sample of space in that process a b c will also introduce the partition of d as well d is occurring in this sample of space and what is the partition of a a d it is uh, given by a intersection d a intersection first one is this one is a intersection d this uh, this segment is a intersection d this segment is uh, a intersection b and this segment is a intersection c so it introduced partition of c so from the law of total property uh, several times i had already expressed so you can compute the property of observing d so we can compute so here apply uh, that multiplication rule but uh, factor all these in this framework and you know all these probability and compute all these probability so you got the probability of t what is that it is 0.62 so what is happening here you know the value of this you know the value of this you know the value of this all three things are known to you so you can easily compute these first property so what are those easily we can see so visualization of this uh, uh, visualization of computation of property of d it is already given here so d is talking about mm, getting a head okay on these three tier types of coin so these are the outcome associated in the d okay so you can compute visualize the computation process of uh, probability of data or probability of d okay so we are going to compute the uh, three posterior probability because we are having everything so posterior probability of a given d it would be just uh, this quantity 0.3226 likewise posterior probability of b given d it would be this value posterior probability of c given d it would be this value and we are having all the uh, we have already solved problem so what is happening that we can on organize all this value in the bayesian update like this way we can if you so in the tabular form we are saying that so we are first we are what is given thing we are having hypothesis there are three, three hypotheses that means we are having three different type of coin the type a type b type c then uh, prior probability of this hypothesis given to us what is probability of uh, a is 0.4 probability of b is 0.4 probability of c is 0.2 okay after that likelihood we are able to compute likelihood so this is likelihood so easily you can say that i had as i had already mentioned that likelihood happens to be not a probability distribution why if you sum you we know that if you are taking a probability distribution and if you sum all the values for that probability distribution it would sum to one but if you sum here it is then sum of these likelihood value it would go beyond one so that's why i i am saying that likelihood uh, happens to be not a probability distribution it is just a probability of observing a specific uh, data for given hypothesis that is the so a specific probability so that's where it needs some normalization so what normalization factor is coming it is coming through this uh, we need to normalize this this is the normalizing factor what we see that we have already computed this one and here uh, in this uh, base rule in order to compute a probability posture probability uh, in uh, numerator what we observe we observe this uh, probability joint probability of uh, hypothesis and data so that we we always come up with prior probability times likelihood function so that and after that what how you can compute posture probability by dividing this uh, numerator by the probability of d and the, you can see that this posture probability it is a legitimate distribution why because if you sum up this value it would give one total is one so it is a legitimate probability so remember that likelihood is not a 
probability mass function or distribution it is just a property of observing a specific data okay that is the difference so very serious kind of question generally you see that so same problem we will try to solve it from random variable perspective so what is happening that what is random variable we can observe that and uh, property mass perspective would come also here so here theta we are calling it the value of hypothesis then theta is taking value a b c okay Th so theta is the random variable simply we call it and p of theta is the uh, probability distribution okay that prior distribution of this one so p of theta is already given here so capital theta denote you know, capital theta is the hypothesis you can see that it is taking value uh, what are the possible value it is taking value a b c it is a random variable taking three value with this probability it is uh, uh, from the distribution perspective after that uh, what we have to compute we have to compute this likelihood function of the observing data given hypothesis theta okay so that also we uh, we can talk about likelihood function so all these things you can see in uh, this table so these are the possible value of um, theta and uh, theta a b c and uh, these are the likelihood function what we call it and uh, we call it uh, these are the prior distribution of theta observing theta it is already given in the probability mass function perspective okay so uh, just we have to find the posterior distribution of theta so uh, here posterior distribution of theta it will be just uh, all this value it is coming with respect to so you can see all this value so it is just uh, uh, from the framework of random variable and probability mass function same problem okay other things we will discuss in next class it is already above 45 minutes